Good morning, boys and girls. My name is Tiffany, and I'm your host. This is your teacher, Julie. Today, we will learn about new insects. Today's lesson is titled, Insects That Glow and Sing. I can't wait to learn about these fascinating creatures. By the end of today's lesson, we will be able to classify and identify insects as small six-legged animals with three body parts. Identify and describe the head, thorax, and abdomen. Describe an insect's exoskeleton. And compare and contrast grasshoppers and crickets. Let's get started. Can you name the common characteristics of all insects? I can. Watch. Head, thorax, abdomen, and six legs. Head, thorax, abdomen, and six legs. Exoskeleton, two antenna, and sometimes wings. Head, thorax, abdomen. How do ants communicate or share information with one another? They use their antenna. The antenna have sensory parts for insects to use when they smell or touch. Today we're going to learn about some other insects and how they communicate. Today's read aloud is called Insects That Glow and Sing. The insects we will learn about today communicate by glowing in the dark and singing to one another. Here's our KWL chart which stands for what we know, what we wonder, and what we learn. Let's write down what we know and wonder about insects that glow and sing on the chart. We know that insects are small, six-legged animals with three body parts. We also know that the common body parts of insects include a head, a thorax, an abdomen, exoskeleton, two antenna, and sometimes wings. We also know that communicates that insects communicate using their Can you tell me? Yes, their antenna. We added those facts to the chart. Now, Tiffany, is there anything you're wondering about right now? I heard you say that insects can sing. How do insects sing? That's a good question. Let's add that to what we wonder. What else are you wondering about? I wonder what makes insects glow. Ooh, that's a good question. What makes insects glow? What's one more thing you're wondering about? I wonder which parts of the insect make them glow and sing. Which body parts do insects use to make themselves glow and sing? And I can't wait to find out which insects glow and which insects sing, so I'm going to add that too. Before we begin our read aloud lesson, we're going to review a few vocabulary words. The first vocabulary word we're going to review is bioluminescence. Say the word with me, bioluminescence. Bioluminescence is light given off by some plants and animals caused by a biochemical reaction. Listen to me use it in a sentence. The night sky was filled with the bioluminescence of dancing fireflies. Our next word is four legs. Say the word with me. Four, four legs. legs. Four legs are the front legs of a four-legged animal. Listen to me use it in a sentence. Since kangaroos hop, they use their forelegs more for balancing than they do for walking. The next word is lanterns. Say the word with me. Lanterns. Lanterns are lights that usually have a covering made of glass. Listen to me use it in a sentence. The campers all carried lanterns as they went from tent to tent. The next word is transparent. Say the word with me. Transparent. A clear material that allows objects behind it to be seen is transparent. I could see every detail on the coins when I looked through the transparent magnifying glass. The next word is timbles. Say the word with me. Timbles. timbles. 
Timbals are thin skins that produce sounds and in some insects. Vibrating timbals are responsible for the cicadas piercing sounds on a summer night. Today we will learn about fireflies, grasshoppers, and crickets. Grasshoppers and crickets depend upon good hearing to communicate with one another, but they do not hear with ears on the sides of their heads like we do. Listen carefully to find out where the hearing organs are located on grasshoppers, and where they are located on crickets. Can you blink, boys and girls? So can I. Does your abdomen light up when you blink? No? Are you sure? How can you tell? If you're blinking, perhaps you just can't see. Turn to your neighbor and ask him or her to watch your abdomen while you blink. Did it glow? No? Well, I'm not really surprised. If humans were able to produce their own light, they might never have invented the electric light bulb. We fireflies have been around long before electricity or even candles. Our light organs, called lanterns, are located in our transparent or see-through abdomens. Lanterns are lights that have coverings over the source of the light, usually made of glass. When humans first discovered us lighting up the forest, they were amazed by how much light we produced. In ancient China and Japan, people collected us in transparent jars and used us as lanterns to find their way in the dark. What does transparent mean? It means you can see through it. They named us fireflies, but we are not flies at all, and our light, unlike a fire, is cold. Cold light is the way your ancestors explained our beautiful magical light. Scientists now know that chemical reactions create the light, and they describe this process with a much bigger word. They call it bioluminescence. Can you say that? Bio means living, and lumen means light. I think that's a good name for it, don't you? We are living lights. Other animals and plants grow, or light up like tiny electric bulbs, but most of them live in the ocean. Certain types of squids, Jellyfish, corals, and even sharks glow beneath the water. Plants such as algae in the ocean can also grow on the surface of the water. At times, this bioluminescence is so bright that it looks as if someone flipped a light switch beneath the water. It's less common to find land animals that glow or give off light. I've told you that we are called fireflies, but do any of you call us by another name? We're also called lightning bugs, but we are neither flies nor bugs. We are beetles, another group of insects. Take a close look and see. Like all insects, we have three body parts, head, thorax, and abdomen, six legs, two antenna, an exoskeleton, and like most insects, two pairs of wings. We undergo a complete metamorphosis, changing from egg to larva to pupa to adult. What is the complete metamorphosis? A change that is so big that the insect looks completely different after. Some of our eggs and larvae even glow. Have you ever heard of a glowworm? <coughs> Glowworms are also misnamed. They are not worms at all. At what stage do insects look like worms? The larva. The larvae of fireflies and other insects are often called glowworms because they live on the ground like worms do, and they glow in the dark. In order for any animals to, sur to, to survive, they must reproduce or have babies. That means we must all work hard to attract mates. Fireflies glow when they are seeking mates. The males fly through the dark, flashing our very specific signals to females who sit patiently and wait for them. Our yellowish-green lights stand out against the night sky as we signal one another with special codes. When a female recognizes a male's code as being from the same species or type, she flashes the code back to him and the male lands beside her. Have you ever noticed how some fireflies flash close to the ground with one pattern, but others seem to be higher in the air with a different flash pattern at a slightly later time of night? These are males with different species attracting their own females. Watch us next summer and you'll see what I mean. Hi there. 
I bet you're surprised to see me today. I'm not bioluminescent. I don't glow, but I do sing. That's what I wanted to talk to you about today. Other ways that insects communicate or share information. Who has been narrating this read aloud up to this point? A fly, a firefly. Based on the image, who do you think will be narrating now? The grasshopper. Fireflies are silent communicators, flashing their glowing lights back and forth. What is the firefly's light organ called? A lantern. How do you communicate with one another? You talk, don't you? And what do you use to talk? Your mouths, of course. Although we insects use mouths for eating, just like you, we have no vocal cords or voice boxes, so we don't use them for talking and singing. Even so, we grasshoppers can be a noisy bunch. Have you ever heard grasshoppers sing on a summer day? You won't hear any words, but you will definitely hear a chorus of sounds. Just like birds, each type of grasshopper produces a different song. If you listen closely, you can tell what type of grasshopper is singing by its song. Of course, it takes many years of studying grasshopper sounds to be able to tell them apart. Nearly all grass grasshoppers have two pairs of wings, but we seldom use them for flying because we spend so much of our lives low to the ground. Male grasshoppers use their wings for communicating with one another. Female grasshoppers do not sing, but they listen very carefully. They hear our sounds with tympanum, eardrums on the side of their abdomens. The tympanum is located near where the thorax and abdomen come together, close to where the muscular hind legs attach to the thorax. Grasshoppers, locusts, and crickets all make sounds by rubbing body parts together, sometimes two wings and sometimes a leg and a wing. To make sounds, I lift my wings and rub my front wings together. The vein, composed of many tiny teeth on the bottom of one wing, rubs against the sharp edge, or scraper, on the top of the other wing. It is a little like rubbing your fingers along the teeth of a comb. As the two parts rub together, the wings vibrate, moving back and forth rapidly to produce the sounds that you hear. You may be familiar with my cousin, the katydid. Katydids have long antenna, just like me. As they rub their front wings together, it sounds like they are calling out, katydid, katydid. Their high-pitched calls become faster and faster as the outside temperature rises. Some people even say that you can tell how hot it is by the number of times per second a, a katydid chirps. If katydids live in your part of the world and you are patient enough, you may want to try counting the number of chirps you hear every five seconds. Add 39 to that number and you may have an accurate reading of the temperature, depending on the species of katydid you're hearing. In some Asian countries, in a tradition that has been practiced for thousands of years, male crickets have been kept in cages as singing pets. Do you know where the ears of a cricket are located? You may remember that female grasshoppers hear with special parts on their abdomens, but crickets have ears on their forelegs. The front legs of, it, of animals are called forelegs. Both places must seem a little strange to you since your ears are on the side of your head. Before I leave today, I want to introduce you to another singing insect. These insects are often mistaken for grasshoppers and crickets because they look a lot like us. Does anyone remember what this insect is called? This is a cicada. Cicadas are related to aphids, leafhoppers, and spittlebugs. Unlike grasshoppers and crickets, many cicadas have strong wings and are flat, fast flyers. Male cicadas produce incredibly loud songs, but they do not use their legs and wings to make those sounds. Look closely at the abdomen of a cicada. On its underside, close to the thorax, a cicada has a pair of sound-producing organs called timbals. These rib membranes are a little like the skin of a drum. The cicada uses its muscles to vibrate these drum-like organs. To vibrate means to move back and forth very fast. The timbals pop and click as they move in and out. Their sound is amplified or made louder inside the mostly hollow abdomen, acting like a drum and creating a loud buzzing song. The shrill sound of hundreds or thousands of cicadas singing together on a warm summer evening may be very loud. Grasshoppers, crickets, and cicadas all use sounds to communicate in much the same way that fireflies use their lights. 
Male, males attract females for the purpose of mating, making sure these weaned insects continue to survive. Next time you gather to discuss insects, you will learn about the largest group of insects on Earth. Can anyone guess what that might be? During our les next lesson, we'll find out. Let's move on. Now that we have read about insects that glow and sing, let's try to see what you remember. Try to answer my questions in a complete sentence. Tiffany will demonstrate first. Tiffany, how do fireflies communicate with one another? Fireflies communicate with each other by flashing their lanterns or lights. Great job. In what body part is the firefly's lantern located? The firefly's lantern is located in the abdomen. In what section of the grasshopper are the hearing organs located? The head, the thorax, or the abdomen? The grasshopper's hearing organs are located on the abdomen. The female grasshoppers use their tympanum, or eardrums, on the side of their abdomens to listen to the male grasshoppers. Why do the males sing to the females? They are communicating that they want to mate with them. How do the male grasshoppers make their singing sounds? They rub body parts together, sometimes wings and sometimes legs and wings together. Where are a cricket's hearing organs located? Its abdomen, forelegs, or wings? The hearing organs are located on the forelegs of a cricket. You heard in the read aloud about a tradition in some Asian countries where crickets are kept in cages. Is it males or females that are caged? Why are they caged? The males are kept in cages so people can hear them sing. Do grasshoppers, crickets, and fireflies all have exoskeletons? How do you know? Yes, they are all insects and all insects have exoskeletons. Let's think pair share. You may find a partner for this activity. It could be your mom, dad, sister, brother, or friend, and if you don't have a partner, we'll be your partner. I'm going to ask a question. I'll give you a minute to think about the question, and then I will ask you to turn to your neighbor and discuss the question. You learned about an insect today that is called both a firefly and a lightning bug. Which do you think is the better name, and why? Turn to your partner and discuss the question. Which name did you choose? From what we read, fireflies are neither flies nor bugs. They are beetles. Can we call them glow beetles? What do you think? Wow, this read aloud has given us so much information about insects that glow and sing. When reading and listening, you heard our light organs called lanterns are located in our transparent or see-through abdomens. Say the word transparent with me. Transparent. Transparent refers to a material through which you can see objects. Windows and buildings are made of transparent glass, allowing us to view whatever is outside the window. Look around the room for a transparent object. Tell me what you see and how you know it is transparent. Use the word transparent when you tell about it. Tiffany, could you give us an example? Well, I know that magnifying glasses are transparent because I can see through them. Okay, good. What's the word we've been talking about? Transparent. transparent. Let's do an antonyms activity. I'm going to say a word that is an antonym of transparent, or that means the opposite of transparent. And that word is opaque, which means you cannot see through it. I'm going to name some objects, and if you can see through the object, say, that is transparent. If you cannot see through the object, say, that is opaque.
A clear drinking glass filled with water. That is transparent. A solid wooden pencil. That is opaque. That's right. We can't see through that pencil. A piece of plastic wrap. That is transparent. That's right. We can see through it. What about a window? That is also transparent. Great job. How about a solid wooden desk? That is opaque. Perfect. Let's review what we learned and add it to our chart. Today we learned that insects are small, six-legged animals with three body parts, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. We also learned that an insect's exoskeleton is a protective outer covering that protects the insides of the insect. And we also learned that grasshoppers hear with special parts on their abdomens, but crickets have ears on their forelegs. Thank you so much for participating in our lesson. We learned so many things. All rights and credits from this lesson belong to Core Knowledge Language Arts. We would like to thank them publicly for sharing these materials. Thank you and we'll see you next time. Share what you've learned today. Tell someone at home about all the insects that you know that glow and sing. Bye. Bye.